Nuclear. Wind is wind, this guy says. You said you want to do everything. I, I, I know the answer to that, right? Yeah, the, uh, I, want, I want to do everything. That's right. All, everything domestic is uh, in the game. All right. Thanks for the plan. Would you consider being VP or Secretary of Energy uh, to either presidential candidate or make an independent run for president with somebody like Bloomberg? No. Uh, what is the timetable to reduce our imports from $700 billion a year to get it down? 300 billion. Uh, will this type of reduction, with this type of reduction, how many new jobs will cr be created in the U.S.? I don't know. I don't know how many new jobs, but it's, they're only winners in my plan. The only loser is foreign oil. It still pains me that, uh, that, that our friends over there would. Uh, anyway. What does Mr. Pickens propose uh, to enhance the national uh, electrical grid to deliver power from the wind farms in the interior states to the coast where most of the consumption is? I think that, that, uh, that uh, the government has to give access for transmission lines. And I think that can be accomplished with the Eisenhower plan for interstate highways. That it's an emergency, it is a crisis, and it will be done and it'll be done uh, very expeditiously. How much of the oil price is being driven by speculation and the weak dollar attracting foreign investors? Joe from Massapequa. That's Joey Buttafuoco, maybe, from Massapequa. No need from Massapequa to body shop out there. Um, what do you think, Boone? What was all that about? Oh, it's, uh, Joey, Buttafuoco Joey, Joey Buttafuoco is from Massapequa. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's the Amy Fisher thing. Forget it, Blue. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a different Joe, I guess. It could be him. I don't know. I don't know where he is now. How much of it is being driven by speculation? I don't think. In the weak dollar. It, no? it isn't driven by speculation. It's uh, you've got 85 million barrels of production a day, and you have an 86 million barrel a day demand. So you're in balance with supply and demand. And that moves the price up. That's it. Mm. Right. Mary Jo opened the door and I shot her. Will the uh, weather patterns change if we have so many turbines? Any impact on the environment? I'm not getting any uh, complaints from anybody on the environment. And uh, I was with uh, Carl Pope, Sierra Club, at, uh, at Sweetwater last week. And, and Carl, uh, we talked about all these issues. And I think Carl is uh, in agreement it has to be done and should be done. But he didn't complain about any environmental problems. Insights on solar power. It seems that global warming brings more sun and longer for most states now. Uh, will that be a good source of energy? Well, there's no question we're going to have to use solar. But we have not been pressed, Joe, to do anything here other than buy more foreign oil. Right. And so now you're going to see the, the uh, uh, Americans, uh, we're going to answer the bell. There's no question about that. We're going to come up with ideas. They're going to be good ideas. And uh, it's all going to happen. All right, so what do these cars look like that they're driving on natural gas over? Is it liquefied natural gas? Well, you can use LNG or you can use compressed natural gas. But a passenger car like yours, for instance. Yeah. Uh, see, I, I'm, I have a Honda yeah. uh, GX. Uh, and, it's, uh, and that's a natural gas car, okay? I can fuel that car at home in my garage. You have tanks? The tanks in the car. Deliver. No, it comes, you know, you have natural gas. It, you gotta have natural gas in your house, not on fuel oil. So but like the same way you run right it to your barbecue, your you could run it right to your car? Sure, I mean, you just, you just plug it in at night and it's full the next morning. And get this, it's cost me about $1.59 a gallon. Buck fifty nine a gallon is cheap. Um, what kind of horsepower can you can you have? Oh, you can't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. No, you can't tell the difference. Uh, natural gas is a uh, you know it's a hotter fuel than gasoline is. What so, what would happen to natural gas prices though? If we talk about oil prices being uh, dropping rapidly, what would happen to natural gas prices if we started using uh, thirty eight percent of our fuel that we consume in cars was natural gas? You're saying natural gas price would go up. Yeah. Uh, demand, if we have demand, it, it'll cause it to go up. But know this, that it won't go above gasoline. One MCF of natural gas is equal to eight gallons of gasoline. But so, if you're paying $1.59 right now to fuel your car with it, you could see it costing two fifty, three dollars $3, very close to what gasoline prices pretty good, cost. I guess. No, I don't think you'll go up that high. Well, I think, sure, you could say $3, but we're seeing gasoline at 4 Right. 
So uh, it will. But know this, when I say one to eight, stick with me just for a second. Once MCF to eight gallons, mm -hmm. and you have four dollars a gallon, right. that's thirty-two dollars in MCF. See what I mean? Right. Thirty-two. Right. Well, natural gas is selling for twelve dollars in MCF now. Okay. So there's a lot of room there for natural gas to go up and still be below gasoline. So I wonder, to retool GM and Chrysler and, and Ford, how long would that take to... You know, it, the, uh, uh, one of my guys was in Thailand recently, and he said they were just rolling out of a GM line there and going right to an upfitter for natural gas. And so... Not it, that uh, hard. It's not... Uh, Can I get premium? Premium what? Premium gas? Sure. You premium get, natural gas? Sure you can. You can get premium, you can get uh, a regular, you can get it all. They're all the same price, though, Joe. But you can pay you, more if you'd like. You can, <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Well, this, this is, it's, this, you know. It's pretty it, neat, isn't it? Yeah, I'm getting sold, yeah. Na natural gas, though, is premium. It is already premium. It's premium I'm because it's clean. It's 80% it's, uh, cleaner than gasoline and diesel. I'm still worried about Chavez and Amadina John. And I'm just, that's, all, why, that's my why only why problem. Why wouldn't you be? Uh, no, I'm, I'm worried be, that they wouldn't have as much money. Oh, you're worried uh, about yeah. feeling well, yeah, bad, yeah, bad, bad, bad for the terrorists. Let me tell you what's going to happen to uh, the Venezuelans and the Iranians. Yeah. Everything somebody else doesn't take, the Chinese will. And so the they'll, Chinese be, oh, now they'll are, be fine. You're trying to make me feel better. Uh, the Chinese are getting ready to loan the Venezuelans $40 billion, and they're going to have a call on that oil. Okay. See, I think that we should have a call on the Iraqi oil. And, you know, you say, well, that's why you went to war. No, it's not why you went to war. You didn't go to war for rocks in Afghanistan. It wasn't oil in Iraq. But what's happened now, we have, we've paid billions and billions of dollars in for the Iraqi situation, and we've lost 4,000 lives. Wow. We should come out of there with a call on their oil at market price. All right. We've been, we have a lot more to talk about, and um, literally, there's got to be over a thousand emails that have flooded in. We will try to get to as many of these questions as we possibly can. If you've got more emails, you can send them to squawk at cnbc.com, and uh, the ones we don't get to, we'll make sure he gets a look at them anyway. Boom Pickens is sticking around, and we are adding in one of the to a very special edition of Squawk Box. This morning, we are joined by Boone Pickens, who is rolling out his national plan on how to solve the nation's energy crisis. He's doing it first right here on CNBC. Huge article out this morning in USA Today. He goes from here to a press conference where he'll be talking about this, but we've been talking with him this morning about that plan. Boone points out uh, that the nation has been talking about uh, spending $700 billion a year, that it goes overseas to try and pay for energy prices. His plan looks at reducing foreign reliance on oil. It looks at building new wind generation facilities, and it looks at uh, producing 20% of our nation's electricity from that wind. Then you could take natural gas and use that as a way uh, to fuel cars. He's been talking about that all morning right here. There's a website that went up this morning, pickensplan.com, if you'd like to find out more about it. We've been getting thousands of emails that have been coming right here to Squawk Box, questions for the man himself, and uh, he's going to be joining us for the next half hour to talk more about it. Yeah, and it would, 38% uh, of our uh, imported oil, it would reduce. It would. I say a third. 38% is about a third, but... but you know, you can pencil out to 38. You can do more than that because uh, know this, Joe, there's tremendous amount of natural gas in this country. And the unbelievable part is that our technology has, uh, has, has advanced us to the point where we can, we can frack the shale, which are the source beds, which have the gas. All us geologists knew the gas was there. We didn't know how to get it out. Yeah. Now the technology has advanced where we have it. We've more than doubled our gas reserves in this country in the last five it, years. It, and wind is at a point where it, it, can, it can do this without subsidies. It's viable. You, to do, you, if the wind doesn't blow all the time. We get mail. Wind doesn't blow all the time. Um, now, don't get negative, Jim. Well, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying we're getting some emails that say that doesn't work without subsidies, doesn't blow all you the time. You have to have the PTC. You have to have the production tax credit. But when, say, for 200,000 megawatts, 